Hey there, this is the second video in the Fusion 360 Thumbscrew Saga. And uh, we've printed the ob object now that we, we designed and we created in the first video. But now we, we've printed it and I'm ashamed to say that it didn't work. Uh, we were ever so slightly too tight on some of the tolerances. So let's have a quick peek. Um, here we can see the item that we printed. However, it's good in this direction. So the the uh, cold shoe adapter does fit in this way, but however, the, the, the cut corners are too tight. And so rather than starting from scratch, we can just go back in the timeline of Fusion 360 and redesign the way that we're going to, or have a, have a second think about how to cut those corners. And so we'll highlight the point, highlight the feature inside Fusion 360 that we have a timeline down here. And this is a timeline of actions that is almost the same as our undo history. However, we can navigate this without removing those, func the, those later uh, actions. So if we go back to say this point here, we'll see that the model has changed, but these actions are still present we're, we're just not currently being displayed on our model. And it enables me to just right click here on uh, the drawing that we did at the beginning of all of this and edit the sketch. And we can actually get back in here and have a, a rethink about how I want to cut these corners off. What we discover is that whilst my measurement of this dimension was good, which we said was 18 millimeters. So yeah, 18.1, 18 millimeters. Uh, however, the uh, the dimension of these cut corners edge to edge, is about, is so the, the, the dimension of cut corner to cut corner is 21.7. So if we add three millimeters of slop into that, we would get 22. So let's just check that in the model that we that we created. If we go to sketch dimension and measure this distance to this distance, we end up with 20. So we can see that we are well shy of our 22 mil. So the way that I then tackled this, this the second time was I I scrapped all of all of these dimensions. So we'll actually we'll actually draw this section again. If I so right there I uh, I selected on one line, but I want to select all of these lines. So I can just double click on this one that will select all of the connected uh, curves, and then I can hit delete. And that will delete those. So let's design the square headed recess again. We'll go to the square. So uh, yeah, we're going to go create, we're going to go to rectangle, center rectangle, and try again. So 18.4 by 18.4. That's our first. And this time we're going to aim for 22 millimeters. We'll, we'll do the same action again. So create a rectangle, center rectangle. And this time we're going to go 22, 22. And this time rotate this second square through 45 degrees. So we will select all of the curves that I'm interested. So we'll double click on this, and then we're going to modify and move. Let's go to the shortcut M. And now we've got the options to move or copy the current selection. Now, if I press and hold shift, I can now scroll up and down inside this uh, little window. Down here is the create copy option. So that's how I could easily duplicate this item. 
or the current selection. But what I want to do this time is I actually want to spin the current selection around a specific axis. And to do that, I'm, I need to set the pivot. I, the current pivot point is this center point along the far left hand line, which is not where I want to rotate the shape about. So we will go to set pivot around here. And then we must click on the tick to say I'm done. And then we can actually do rotate. Okay, well actually we'll do the rotate first. We can do rotate, then hit the axis there. And no, that's not what I want to do. So we'll select this one with a double click. That will select all of the connected shapes, uh, all the connected lines for this one. And then we'll go to modify, copy or move slash copy. And now if I press and hold, uh, yeah, so you can see here, move object, these ones here, and move type. Now the current pivot point is this point halfway down the far left hand line. That's not where I want to rotate my shape around. So we will set a new pivot. So set pivot, you can select this one and then click on the center point here. We must accept this by saying done. And now I can just rotate the selection and I want to do it by 45 degrees. So we'll just type in 45, enter. And that has now, we now have the cut corners and they are the correct dimensions apart. So to quickly tidy uh, these other pieces up, we could, I haven't got a good way of doing this yet. I, I ended up just using the trim command like this to just chop out these be these pieces. Though I'm sure there's a better way and then just chopped off of these pieces. Don't forget, we've also got these little pieces on the outside as well, which we'll get rid of. We can actually get rid of these construction lines as well. What we can see here are the constraints. And if you, sometimes the constraints are very useful. Sometimes the constraints are kind of getting in the way. Uh, if you want to remove these constraints, the, the way I've been doing this at the moment is going to select, select filters and making sure that sketch geometry constraints are on and if you want to be able to select dimensions you've got to make sure that dimensions are ticked in this list and then that way we'll be able to select either move them so that they're out of the way or delete them and get rid of those constraints we don't need to tidy up these constraints these ones indicate that this line is parallel to this line and this one is parallel to this line i'm happy with this I can say finish sketch and now all of those subsequent actions that we performed will have now been performed with the new sketch with the with including the edits to the sketch that we made so now if I switch my layout grid off this is now the shape with the new sketch geometry inside it we should double check that though if we go to inspect We'll just measure this edge to this edge, and it's now 22 millimeters, whereas before it was not. So what I'll do now is I'll run this one through the printer and we'll have a quick look at the result. Q, poorly focused time-lapse photography from my original GoPro HD Hero and stock music courtesy of ScreenFlow.
And so here we have the final result, the finger plate printed here. And this time the dimensions are good. So the cold shoe adapter does fit in there nicely. And so when this was actually deployed, stick that through there and that's just about tight enough. And this is in fact how my camera up there is secured to its camera plate like this. And then I'm pretty happy with the, the tension applied by screwing that thread into the uh, pan and tilt head for the camera. If anything, I could have made this hole slightly smaller just to make this fit a little bit tighter. And of course we could, could also play with the tolerances around here just to make that even more snug. But I do want to be able to remove this when I want to. So I think this concludes the saga of the cold shoe adapter and finger plate thumb screw. Thank you very much for your time.